So in the previous video, we have already seen the Keshavananda Bharti case, we have seen the Golaknath case and we have seen the Minerva Mills case. We ended the video saying that we would be looking at the Vaman Rao case. So we ended the previous video with the question, would the basic structure of the constitution apply retrospectively or not? And we said that we would continue with the Ra Vaman Rao case of 1981. So it was in the succeeding year that the Supreme Court answered this question. In the Vaman Rao case, the Supreme Court said that it now adhered to the basic structure principle. However, the Supreme Court made it clear that the basic structure doctrine would not be applicable retrospectively. So in the Vaman Rao case of 1981, the Supreme Court said that the basic structure would not be applicable retrospectively. It would only be applicable after April 24 of 1973, that is the date of the judgment in the Keshavananda Bharati case. So the basic structure doctrine would be applicable after 1973, that is 24th April of 1973, it would not apply retrospectively. Clearly, the concept of basic structure of the constitution is an act of jurisprudence. It is a fantastic example of jurisprudence. Please read two books at this point that could prove critical to your understanding of working of the constitution over the years. Uh, the first book is by Fali Nariman, The State of the Nation, and you have uh, 10 important judgments of the Supreme Court by Zia Modi. Both are very good books. You can just read it. It is only by reading extensively can a student truly understand the basic structure of the constitution. However, to simplify things from an examination point of view, you can refer to a well curated list by Lakshmi Kant. We'll just run through this list now. The first one is supremacy of the constitution. The second one, sovereign, democratic and republican nature of the Indian polity. So we have already seen before that uh, in India we have a a balance between uh, judicial supremacy and parliamentary supremacy. So what the Supreme Court says is that you have a supremacy of the constitution, not simply of the institution, but of the constitution. So supremacy of the constitution is a basic structure of the constitution. Sovereign, democratic and republican nature of the Indian polity is a part of the basic structure of the Indian constitution. The secular character of the country separation of powers between the legislature, the executive and the judiciary, all of this is part of the basic structure of the Indian constitution. The federal character of the polity, unity and integrity of the nation, welfare state including socio-economic justice for the masses all fall under the ambit of the basic structure of the constitution. We also have judicial review which was explicitly told that you know it was part of the basic structure of the constitution freedom and dignity of the individual which is now a part of the fundamental right and it is justiciable. We also have the parliamentary system model which is a part of the basic structure of the constitution. We have a rule of law, harmony and tolerance between fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy as part of the basic structure of the constitution. Principles of equality, liberty, fraternity, free and fair elections, independence of the judiciary, all of these are part of the basic structure of the constitution. We also have a uh, limited power of the parliament to amend the constitution as part of the basic structure so that any law that gives up to par uh, that gives unto the parliament unlimited power to amend the constitution will be invalid. So this is also explicitly told by the supreme court and it is a part of the basic structure doctrine now. Effective access to justice, principle of reasonableness, and powers of the Supreme Court under Article 32, 136, 141 and 142. All of these are part of the basic structure of the constitution. That means these, uh, that means these topics are inviolable. That is they cannot be scrapped from the constitution by either the Supreme Court or even by the parliament. They cannot be removed because they form the basic skeletal framework of the constitution itself and they cannot be tinkered with. This is what the Supreme Court has said. Please go through this list again uh, so that you have a very good understanding of what constitutes the basic structure. This is not a list that has been given out by the Supreme Court of India, but this is a list that is made uh, after reading the judgments or in all of the cases that we discussed till now. Now what we will look at is the ninth schedule of the constitution and how the basic structure doctrine applies to it. We have already seen that uh, the ninth schedule is the schedule where the parliament can place certain laws which are uh, not up for judicial scrutiny.
However, uh, over time, the Supreme Court has had enough rulings on this topic. We will look at it now. In 2017, a nine-judge bench headed by Chief Justice Y.K. Sabarwal upheld the validity of the Parliament's power to place laws in the ninth schedule. So, the Parliament has the power to place laws in the ninth schedule. This was a part of MP's expulsion case where the Supreme Court said that Parliament's power to take action against its members for misconduct was subject to judicial review. However, the Supreme Court ruled that this was a limited power subject to judicial review. So, the Supreme Court said that laws could be placed in the right schedule, there is no problem. However, it is subject to judicial review, thus bringing even the ninth schedule under the ambit of judicial review. So, there is no part of the constitution that cannot come up for judicial review. This is what being said by the Supreme Court. Hence, the laws placed under 9th schedule after April 24 of 1973, that is the judgment date of the Keshavananda Bharati case, will be subject to judicial review. Any law can be placed by the parliament in the 9th schedule. However, it can come up for judicial review if the Supreme Court feels that it is uh, that such a law that is placed in the 9th schedule is violating the basic structure of the Indian constitution. Such a review again will be based on two broad points. It is violation of fundamental rights. So the second point is basis of the nature and degree of the rights violated and the impact of the law placed in the 9th schedule on Indian polity. So the Supreme Court will look at both of these points and then it can take up such a matter for judicial review. So the basic structure principle stands and it is applicable even to the 9th schedule. So a law can come up for judicial review if it violates the fundamental rights and it can also come up for review based on the nature and degree of the rights violated and the impact of the law on Indian polity. In the same judgment that is in the Vaman Rao case, the bench observed that articles 15 and 16 dealing with reservation in educational institutions and government jobs respectively were part of the basic structure of the Indian constitution. So, articles 15 and 16 dealing with reservation in educational institutions and government jobs respectively were part of the basic uh, structure of the constitution. However, remember that the Supreme Court has the power to review its own judgments with a bench that is of greater strength. So, even though uh, the Supreme Court till today has said that these are part of the basic structure of the constitution, so tomorrow another bench with greater strength can come in and overrule previous decisions of the Supreme Court also. This is also possible. This concludes the video on basic structure of the Indian constitution. Thank you.